deductive science is the logic of pure reason. And uh, I believe Aristotle was the prime exponent, uh, although even he uh, suggested things should be checked by experiment. But experiment is based on testing things to see if it actually works. You know, if I push this button, what happens? If I put something in this black box, what do I get out the other end? If I chop this tree down, what happens? And so experiment and experience are how the human race and how animals and how we all basically operate. We try something, it works or it doesn't work, and we learn by experience. As soon as you get into the logic of pure reason, then you're suggesting things ought to work because you think they ought to work. And it's all very well. I mean, I mentioned buses earlier. You think the bus ought to come along, but we all know they often don't, or when they do, they come along in threes. Well, there's a classic example. We all know from experience that buses come in threes, but pure reason says they ought to turn up when, pretty much every 10 minutes when you want a bus, and they don't. And so why don't we learn how buses really work and say, well, look, let's just accept they always come in threes because that's what always happens. And that's a sort of typical example, really, of the difference between uh, experience and logic of pure reason. But when you start talking about the higher sciences, then it can be that pure reason can take over and start telling nature what to do. And it's a very dangerous thing telling nature what to do because it doesn't often listen. And the problem there is that a lot of this uh, logic of pure reason these days is driven by pure mathematics. And I have the highest regard for mathematicians who do stuff with pencil and paper that I can only dream of. In fact, often have nightmares about, but never mind. And it is absolutely incredible what these guys can do. And mathematics is a brilliant and useful tool. And we wouldn't be where we were in the modern world today without mathematics. So I have a great respect for mathematics, but it's a tool. And the problem is, when the tool starts driving the operator, then you've got a problem. It's, it's the classic argument in the science fiction world, is when the robots start getting more intelligent than the humans who've made them, and they take over. What happens then? When it comes down to the logic of pure reason versus their actual empirical experience, the mathematics can define the way nature ought to work because the mathematics is beautiful. But Alfen, I think, in terms of plasma behavior, put his finger on it. He said, the equations are absolutely beautiful. There's only one thing wrong with them, and the electrons refuse to obey them. And that's the problem with telling nature what to do, because your mathematics says it should do it. Your mathematics is a tool, and it's only as good as, as the use you're putting it to. And if there is a flaw in the fundamental thinking behind the mathematical model that you are trying to uh, work out the equations for, then it doesn't matter how good the equations are, if the model itself is flawed, you won't get the right answers out of it. That, that to me is the difference between deductive science and empirical science. Empirical science is, is working out what actually happens and doing it by experience. Deductive science is working out what ought to happen based on your current model. But if there's a flaw in the model, when you test it against real experience, you should find out pretty quickly whether your model is, is right or wrong. And then that's full circle again to what we were talking about earlier in terms of whether you've got consensus science, which is prepared to accept contrary evidence as genuine evidence that there is a fundamental flaw in the model forming the consensus. And as I've said, that if you have too much inertia in the system, then it won't accept contrary evidence. And one of the most common excuses is experimental error. And you'd be surprised how many papers are published these days which simply dismiss adverse results as being experimental error. So that is a point when the, um, the theoretical pure reasoned and mathematical models are taking over, or the consensus is taking over, and try to tell nature what it should be doing. And nature's got its own way of saying, well, actually, I'm going to do what I do do. And just because your models don't explain that very well isn't my problem. I'm going to carry on doing what I do, and it's up to you to find out how I'm doing it. And if we stop asking the questions, how is it doing it? And if we stop having an open enough mind to genuinely investigate the anomalous results which don't fit the current model, then we will have reached the end of science. But it won't mean that we know everything. It just means that we aren't going any further.